I got big plans. <laughs> He had this funk thing about him. Lyrically, I couldn't believe a lot of the things he was coming up with. I could feel him being something different. Raw, uncut, lyrical. He didn't sound like other MCs. I felt like, wow, we got another hometown hero coming from Brooklyn, period. So much changed in hip hop because of Ready to Die. One day we all just gathered up on my block on St. James, about 30 of us. And that was the first time Big freestyled on the mic. I mean, he, he bodied that shit. To where people was coming around my block the next day like, yo, where's the dude Biggie? That's when he took it serious. In the early stages with just myself and Easy Mo B and Biggie, we want to make the hardest shit possible. Sessions was ill. We were still off the block. The first time we went into the studio, the first words came out of his mouth. Who the hell is this? Paging me at 546 in the morning. Crack the dawn and now I'm yawning. Wipe the cold out my eye. I was like, yo, this dude right here? This dude is gonna blow. At that time, he was way advanced at such a young age. Rap wise, flow, delivery, concept, metaphors. I was like, wow. Because remember, he was a new artist. I didn't have to tell him nothing. He never wrote anything. He would sit and just listen to the beats. Next thing you know, five minutes later, it's like, I'm ready. Big was like an alien to me. I never ever seen anybody create like that. And I mean, he, he owned the room when he walked in. And you feel this gangster thing with him, but that was just, you know, a part of his life. But Big's presence was always funny. Yo, he cracked mad jokes. I got techniques dripping out <laughs> my butt cheeks. What is wrong with this dude, man? <laughs> <laughs> well, the song that stuck out to me the most probably was Machine Gun Funk. That's supposed to have been his first single. But that was in the beginning when Puff was going through the stuff with Uptown. And he trusted Puff. And he believed in Puff. There's no one like Puff. Like, he's one of one and a visionary of what hip-hop needed to be at the time. Half of the Ready to Die album was recorded when he was on Uptown. The other half was recorded when he was on Bad Boy. He didn't want to re-record the whole album. And it's rumored that he brought it for a million dollars. You know, Big wanted to call the album the Teflon Dawn. That's what he wanted to call the album. Puff was like, nah, we got to change it up. I remember when we was doing the title track, I was a little disturbed. I said, and you saying you ready to die? What's up, Big? And he told me, he said, yo, like, I'm going through a lot, Mo. It's just a figure of speech. He said, I'm tired of being out there hustling. My mom's is sick. He had a baby on the way. He's going through a lot of pressure. That album tells so much of a story, if you listen to it lyrically, about an average kid from Brooklyn going through trials and tribulations. He put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into this album. In the early process, it was Biggie at his most purest, rawest form. Diddy stepped in and said, hey, man, we got to make some radio records. Songs like Juicy and Big Papa and One More Chance. It's the songs that Diddy had to convince Big on doing. When he played Juicy for Big, it was just like, what the f*** is this? Nah, straight up. He was like, no, you want him to be like, you want to rhyme to that? Puffer come in there and try to gas you with that bop. He tried to sell it to you. And we just sitting in there, you know, there's a bunch of young dudes in there like, juicy fruit. Pac was also schooling big about that too, so it was kind of like, okay, well, Pac telling me that and Puff telling me that, you know what, maybe I should do it. And he perfected it. We used to fuss when the landlord dissed us. No heat. Wonder why Christmas missed us. I left the studio with the mix for Biggs One More Chance. I purposely wanted to go through the hood and drive past Biggs Block blasting. And I had all my windows down. And people was like, yo, what is that? i never forget those things. And I appreciate Puff for giving me the opportunity. Puff invited me down to the bad boy offices. And he asked everyone to leave. And he took out a cassette of an unmastered ready to die. And we sat there, just the two of us, and he played it. And then he gave me the cassette, which I still have to this day, which is probably my most prized, like, possession. I called Mike Kaiser, who was at Def Jam, and I said, I just heard one of the top five albums of all time. He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, Puff just played me the Biggie album. Kaiser's like, top five hip-hop albums? I'm like, no, top five albums of all time. I didn't work with Big until literally the very last song on Ready to Die. Maybe not even two days after the, the song was done, we hear a car blasting the song, and I'm sitting there like, yo, where you get that from? He said, it's on Hot 97. 
from that point, I was like, it's about to be on. I'd taken him up to Hot 97 to see Flex, and I just remember it was a really big deal. The energy was electric. It caught people attention from like the very beginning, and we got a chance to watch that album grow, 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 grow. Biggie single-handedly rung the East Coast back. At that time, in 1994, you gotta remember, Snoop and Dre was kicking our ass. But what that Ready to Die album did for East Coast hip hop and for New York kind of like took those reins back and let people around the world know that, hey, we're not done yet. Big as he was, he was still coming on his block on Fulton Street, sitting out there with a bunch of bread, buying everybody weed, buying everybody liquor, whoever asked for her, I got it. When you go on St. James, it's nothing but Biggie now. The block is named after him. You got the mural right there. You got another mural right there. They knew what he meant. When he won his first source awards, that's the first thing he said. Brooklyn, we did it. New York, New York. Brooklyn go hard. He definitely left a, a mark. We still bumping this music. He's our savior. He's our mayor. You know what I mean? He, he runs the borough. And even to this day, these records are like sing-along anthems. When Biggie say it was all the dream, you could just cut the music off and everybody in the club is singing along with smiles on their faces. I feel good every time I listen to it. Nobody raps like this. Good music is undeniable. Listening to Ready to Die, you still get chills because it's like listening to it at the, you know the first time ever. I do miss Big, you know. I miss him just being him. I'm proud to this day to be a part of something that was so momentous. But then it's also, I think about my friend. I think about my friend that's not here no more. To, to see the fruits of his labor. To see how much that this, this album has really impacted people's lives. I think he would laugh at it in the public. I think he would be like, ah, it ain't nothing, you know. It ain't no big deal. But I think talking to me behind the scenes, he's like, you see what the f I did? You see what you see what I'm doing out here, see? And three words. Big is forever. Throw your hands in the air.